right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Alignment Academy. I'm so, so excited for today's episode. I am bringing this beautiful galactic earth being on today. I found him on TikTok and I immediately reached out because he's talking about all of the things 5D, um, timelines, Akashic Records, really just some deep stuff. So I'm excited to have him on and I'm going to have him introduce himself. So welcome, Aaron. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, and uh, thank you for uh, uh, the opportunity to be on here. And it's a, it's always a pleasure to talk to other awakened conscious people. And um, yeah, so my name is Aaron Lazar, uh, multidimensional psychic channel. Um, I'm sort of a, a leading Akashic realm expert. Um, I work within all areas of the realm. So the terrestrial records, the galactic records, unity consciousness field, the karmic field of energy. Um, I coach with and work with practitioners and star seeds, um, and he I help people achieve their highest timelines through um, sort of deep metaphysical work. So yeah, it's a kind of a broad skill set and range, but it's sort of working in the playground for consciousness, as I like to call it. So it's it's all good and all uh, amazing. So thank you very much, and it's amazing to be here. Oh, I'm so, so happy. And yeah, you do a lot of things, which is amazing. And I'm actually curious because not only are there not a lot of people that work in the Akashic Records just on Earth, but the Galactic Akashic Records is like a whole nother realm. And I recently had my, what I call my Galactic Awakening. I've been spiritually awake for, you know, over 10 years. But when you get into the Galactic stuff, it's like this whole new realm. So I would love to hear about have you always been psychic? Have you always been doing this? Or how did you stumble into this? Um, so I'm 43 years old now. And my I, I was kind of like going back to when I was a kid. <clears throat> I was kind of like um, a weird, normal kid. So I was like, I had a normal childhood, normal friends, played sports and all that kind of stuff. But I had this kind of like healthy, weird interest in, in the sort of stuff on the fringes of society, like paranormal and UFOs. And I remember, I mean, I... I'm talking back in the 1980s. So, you know, in back in the UK. And I remember it was way before the days of the internet and all that kind of thing. And I remember wow. going up to the library, my local library, which was, I was from like a little village in South Wales in the UK. And my nearest library was about, I would say about three, three and a half, four miles away. And I remember walking up and I'd be taking out books on UFOs and ghosts and going back and studying them doing paranormal experiments and all this kind of stuff with my ghetto blaster, trying to record voices of spirit and stuff. So I've always been a bit weird, really, in that way. Um, but then it was when I was 20, um, I had a friend of mine at the time, very powerful spiritualist medium, <clears throat> um, who was running development classes. And I decided to go along, and he was hosting them um, sort of once a week. And it's effectively, he switched on my third eye. <clears throat> so my receiver basically got turned on by this guy and then it was like all the radio stations and tv stations wanted to come through at the same time and I felt like I was having a mental breakdown and I couldn't control it I was 20 years old and I was practically scared I couldn't control it and it was kind of didn't particularly protect myself uh very well and um it kind of it was fine when I was diving into this kind of stuff at sort of weekends on my own terms but when it, when you've got a job in a week and I'm trying to get to sleep on a random Tuesday and I'm seeing things moving across the room and I, I I'm feeling these really heavy negative energies it kind of frankly scared me so I consciously switched it all off and I just pushed it all away from me because I wanted my sanity back <clears throat> and that basically was how it stayed for a long time and then I had my sort of mass that was my awakening i guess my third eye but then i had my um huge sort of great awakening inverted commas if you like later on in life um and it was from the point uh that point that essentially i started to connect into higher states of consciousness start to explore all of this kind of different thing and that part of that includes the sort of galactic hall of records and the akashic realm i sort of fell into the akashic realm really um because I kind of, I'd been to Uluru in Australia and that place is so charged energetically. And I came away from there with almost like this ba full battery of consciousness. And I was like, wow, it was almost like it, like I'd, I'd felt boosted or charged up by that area. And I remember <clears throat> sort of trying to connect to higher states of consciousness. And it was all, almost like um, I, I connected to what I knew then to be the Arcturians. 
And it was like reconnecting with family. And I, I sort of meditated and I spent time with them over the next sort of few months. And they kind of said to me, look, you know, we really kind of like hanging out with you, but for your own development, just it might be good if you went and met some other races and did some other stuff. And I was like, ah, OK. So that's when I started to explore. And, and you know, I, I didn't take it personally. I was like, oh, OK, I, I like being here. You guys are amazing. But, you know, if you want me to go off then you know, that I'll, I'll listen to you. So I started to explore. And that's when I came across the Akashic realm. And um, I'm fortunate enough to be in a small percentage of people that can navigate the whole realm, really. Um, so, yeah, it, it'd be kind of cool to talk about that if you'd like or, or whatever you, you would wish. Yeah, <clears throat> let's get into it. So I would love to know, just sharing, let's like share a little bit about what the Akashic Records are, because obviously, you know, we're really well versed in it. But for someone who needs to just have like a very 3D <clears throat> understanding of it, what how can you describe it? Um, so the easiest way is to think of the akashic records as a ledger or a record of every single thing that your soul has been through since it was yeah. created and not just you know spoiler alert you haven't just lived as a human you've had many many lives as extraterrestrials or aliens yes. right we all have so like you've lived as a human you've lived as all of these other races and each of those experiences is recorded in real time in your akashic records so for all the people tuning into this, and for you and for me, this in real time is now being stored in each of our Akashic records because it's happening to us right now. People okay. listening to this are watching it. I'm talking, you're listening, and vice versa, and it's all kind of going up in real time. And what you find is that some of those experiences have karma attached to them. So, you know, when we make some mistakes or we screw up or, you know, we do some stuff which incurs karma, some of that stuff has karma, some of it doesn't. But all of the information is stored up there um, as a record. It's like, like I say, one big database of information, really. I love that. And then there's two different halls of records, right? So can you explain the terrestrial hall from the galactic hall? Yeah, yeah for sure. So your terrestrial records um, are actually contained within your DNA. So your human records are actually in your body, in your DNA. So if you took a strand of um, DNA, a helix, and you were to write down all of the information that's in one strand of DNA, not a strand, sorry, a helix of DNA, and you were to write it in a book, you'd have a book that was at a million pages. That's how much information is in wow. there. It's huge. That's content. There's no junk DNA. It's all data that's stored within your body. So anybody who is reading past terrestrial lives is actually tuning into a person or yourself on a, on a cellular level in your body. You've also got another um, sort of storage facility, which contains all of your galactic records, and that's stored at your higher self or soul level. So sort of connecting our physical bodies to our ethereal body, higher self, soul, we've got this kind of silver cord of energy that goes up, and that's about six feet or eight feet or so above us wow. is where our soul or higher self sits. And that's where your galactic records are held. And that's one of the reasons why many people who work within the Akashic realm only tend to access one or the other. They don't tend to do both because you kind of need to be shown where they are. Um, so there are a few people who can read galactic. Um, there's way, way more people who can read the terrestrial because they, they're intuitive, but they don't really know why, but they just intuitively tune into the body without realizing what it is. Mm. Um, but yeah, you kind of need to be shown where both are. So yeah, it's super interesting. And you teach people how to do this, right? Yeah, yeah. I've got um, an Akashic Mastery Academy. I teach, I've designed that to take people from scratch to practitioner level um, in three months, basically. And wow. it's uh, every single person can do it. If you've got a soul, a consciousness and a pineal gland, you have the equipment. You've been born with the equipment to be able to do it. You've just never been shown how to operate it. And that's where I come in. That is so amazing. So I'm curious Tell us a little bit about your galactic history if you're if you're open to it, because I know that, you know, you said on your channel, I was like, okay, he says Arcturians, Pleiadians, and Syrians. Are those the three um ET races that you identify the most with? Or yeah, share a little bit about that. So I'm an Arcturian starseed. So mm -hmm. um I come here from a place called Arcturus. Um nice kind of amazing beings. That's my my that's my star family, I guess. Uh, amazing sort of um blue skin. They look sort of they've got this Scandinavian look about them. 
um, and that the, probably the most advanced technology, technologically of all uh, the races, and they've helped humanity a lot. And I kind of, I kind of came from Arcturus, and what, one of the one of the things that you might not sort of be aware of, and I, I, I probably worked with, God, oh goodness me, over a thousand people, and so I've got a lot of reference points. Is that different star seeds from different races tend to share the same personality traits? So Arcturians, for instance, Arcturian star seeds have really got like a like a childish, silly sense of humor. We've kind of got this kind of we like we'll, we'll laugh, we'll have toilet humor and laugh at kind of silly things, and we've kind of got this um, like inner child that we tend to hold on to, mm-hmm. um, and it's it's the spirit of that basically. So that's Arcturians all over. But I have, I've, I've worked and I channel so many different races. Um, but I would say, like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Stasi from Arcturus. However, I work closely with Assyrians. I work a lot with Pleiadians, um, just because it's, it's a good cleansing frequency because it's so high vibrational. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's many others too. There's many others too. But Arcturians are my star family, so I'm, I'm kind of biased, really. And yeah. That. And do you find that like certain star families have? you work with them for different things. Like I know for me, when I learned about the Arcturians, they were just really technologically advanced. They were super smart. They are great problem solvers. And so do you find like you call on different ones for different things? Yeah, definitely. So like the the, the energy of each race um, is very effective for doing different things, if you like. So it has a very good effect. So Syrian energy, for instance, is extremely grounding energy. Um, it's very good at shielding. So if you're creating quantum architecture, you're manipulating energy around you within the quantum field to do to shield yourself or cloak yourself. Mm-hmm. It's extremely effective at that. Um, our Syrian frequency is fantastic healing frequency if you're looking to heal pain and trauma, because you know there's many ways to do that. Um, you know, typically people would go back through a process and revisit the things which have upset us and hurt us, but you can sort of do it the quality and you can cut that down and use galactic frequency. So I do that with Syrian energy. Um, they've Their energy can remove seals, uh, J seals, for instance, the Jehovian seals. You can use it to dissolve grid work. Um, let's say if somebody's um, connected to uh, religious grid work, for instance, you can use it to dissolve that. Very good. Andromedan energy is extremely good with plants and animals. You can heal sick animals with Andromedan energy. Uh, God, where do you go on? Orion. Orion's fantastic for the body. So if you're looking to rejuvenate, if you're looking to kind of capture the fountain of youth, Orion energy is fantastic for that. Uh, Dragon energy is good for confidence. Uh, Oh, goodness me. It just goes on and on. Like, depends what you're looking for. You can find frequency for whatever you want from, there's always a race you can tap into. I love that. And so I'm guessing you learned this through your own knowledge of going through life events and calling on the different ones. So can you give us like a fun example of something that you went through and calling on the cert or yeah, explain how you call on it. So for someone listening, that's like, okay, I'm, I feel like this podcast is going to help a lot of people galactically awaken that there are different things. So if they're like, okay, cool. I want to heal my animal or I want to, you know, heal my inner child or something like that. What could we tangibly do to start to play with these galactic races? <clears throat> so, well, it's like anything. I, what I would encourage people to, I don't want to influence anybody. I'm just here sharing information with you and everybody just feel into exactly mm-hmm. what it is you want to do. Because, you know, it's, it's always about making sovereign decisions. You've got two choices, really, if you want to boil it down to a couple of nutshells. You can either go and explore this stuff on your own, but just make sure you're protected so you're not kind of putting yourself at risk. Um, Or you can get somebody to guide you and connect you to the different races that's done it before. Um, It might take you a bit longer, and you might need to kind of double check with online references of how certain things should be making you feel, etc. You can do it yourself. Um, Or, like I say, you can... You can find somebody a bit more experienced who, who's sort of done it, who can connect you quite quickly and maybe save you some time. Um, I would say I I personally, I, I don't know what it is. I'm quite an independent person and I kind of, um, I didn't, I know that that I've got this kind of connection to, to source. And so I thought, okay, well, I, I've got, I've literally got a connection to the very source of this information that's coming through 
Therefore, I kind of want to try and discover this myself. So I know what I'm getting has not been filtered by another human, if that makes sense. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I love, I respect every single person and I love every single person with a connection. In fact, working with people with a strong connection, I love it. I just, I don't know, I, I, I buzz off working with, with people with great connections. But when I'm sort of discovering things and when I'm learning things, I like to kind of get to the source of that information if I can, because then I know it's been unfiltered. And so I've, a lot of the stuff, in fact, in fact, all of the stuff, um, I've kind of had to figure out and I've kind of discovered on on sort of my own steam and my own connection, really. So people can do it both ways. It's it's entirely up to, to them, really. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So, Aaron, tell us a little bit about, you know, in the beginning you were talking about working within the karmic field and how there's karma in the Akashic records. Can you tell me a little bit more about how karma influences us humans and yeah, anything else that you think that we should know about that? So there's um, basically just, so if you've got people who are just awakening to what it is, karma is essentially an energetic IOU. It's a debt that we pay back through experience. So it's not mm -hmm. a financial thing, but we pay back that through usually negative experiences. Um, and it's usually, not always, but but most of the time, it comes from a past life. It comes from some decision or choice point or something that we did. So, you know, in every single lifetime, we play all the roles. We play uh, the perpetrator. We play the victim. We play all of it. We play every single role in this story of evolution, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so nothing is black and white we we play all of these roles and sometimes we inflict certain things or decisions have an impact let's say and it, and it creates us karma or if we if we impinge on the law of free will for instance that will incur karma so that's another reason if i'm ever working with anybody energetically i'll always ask consent and permission in the moment i never impose myself on anybody energetically because i don't want any karma um so we incur this karma and again, it gets stored in real time up in the Akashic records and gets sucked up there into this big database. And um, it's like it's the middle layer of the Akashic realm. And that's it. I see it like a big cloud of energy. Mm. Um, and that contains all of the karma that a soul has created as, as, a, as a human being. Certainly the terrestrial karmic field is, is all the terrestrial karma. Um, and usually that will become apparent because there will be some sort of negative pattern that somebody is seeing in their life, basically, be it substance abuse, be it relationships where they keep getting the heart broken, uh, where they keep getting stolen from, yada, 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 whatever it is. It's usually negative and it's just some kind of pattern. And the pattern will either be ancestral, so it's in the family line, or it'll be karmic. And if it's karmic, then there's work that we can do around that in the Akashic realm, um, just to understand the lesson, acknowledge the field, and we can actually neutralize that piece of karma and take it away so that wow. that negative inflow is then stopped on that person's life. And this is one of the reasons why when you work in the Akashic realm, if you know what you're doing, you literally can change a person's life by working in this in, in, in a good way. You know, you can really make a difference. Wow. That is mind blowing. I didn't realize that you can neutralize it that quickly and see like a pattern. And I know, you know, yeah. a lot of my audience um, and myself are going through like massive changes, right? I'm, I'm going through my Saturn return. So I'm seeing like all of these like patterns come up to the surface and shift and if I'm, okay, I guess, let me formulate this into a question. If I'm seeing a pattern that I find, okay, this is not serving me anymore. Mm. What would be the best way to observe it and neutralize that karma? Okay. So first of all, the pattern doesn't have to be karma. It might be ancestral. So if you okay. see something negative as a pattern, first of all, look back at mum and dad, male, female on both sides, or back as far as you can. Do you see that same pattern in the ancestry? Yeah. And if you, if you do, that's an ancestral pattern. Okay. If you don't, it's probably karmic. It's going to be one of the two, mm, right? Okay. So if it's, we're talking about karma. So let's say for an instance, it's, you've, you've done the process of elimination. It's not ancestral. So we're going to say that it's karmic, right? And then what you would do, it's super important that you understand and acknowledge the field before you break the pattern. And I tell mm -hmm. you why, because if you don't, and you just, you just break a pattern without 
either acknowledging the field to the ancestors or you you understand the lesson and acknowledge the karmic field, all hell breaks loose because what then happens, the field becomes really agitated and what we call matter starts to speak. And so what you'll see is that everything that can go wrong will start going wrong. Wow. So you will tip a cup of tea on your laptop. Uh, you'll have your bank account hacked. Your car will break down. Um, you'll miss appointments. Opportunities will drain through wow. your fingers. Um, your your income will stop if you're self-employed. You've got a business, for instance. It's lo- all this kind of stuff. Everything will just feel like it's going wrong at once. And all it is is the field is really agitated and it's trying to get your attention. It's going, whoa, hang on a second. You need to acknowledge me. And if people don't realize what's going on, like I say, it can be extremely difficult for people if people just break a pattern. You can't just break. Well, you can break a pattern, but there's consequences. Mm-hmm. So in order so that there's no consequences, you need to, first of all, identify what it is. And then you need to lift it in the correct way. And then the field remains calm and then there's no consequences or knock on effects, basically. Mm, so interesting. And is that what you teach your clients to do? Of course, yeah, hundred percent. On top, and and I don't just teach them that. I teach, I teach people my method, which is like this unique method of working, where I also incorporate. Um, there's the ancestral pattern side of things. I teach people. I teach people how to heal pain and trauma with galactic frequency, how to remove distorted subconscious perceptions and get rid of those. And it's just a, an overall holistic approach, which involves the akashic records as part of it. I love so, that. Yeah, very cool. So the video I actually found you on is the Schumann Mm. resonance video. And for anyone who, yeah, for anyone who is not caught up with that, let's, I'd love for you to just simply explain what happened with the Schumann resonance and what it meant for earth and moving into more of this 5d timeline. So I saw loads and loads of people speaking about the Schumann resonance, not last weekend. I think it was the weekend before. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was all over social media. So I thought, you know what, I'll just I'll make a TikTok and I'll just put my sort of spin on it, really. Pardon me. And, you know, it proved to be really popular. I, th- I think it's been viewed 1.1 million times, I think, and it's still spinning now. I'm still getting notifications mm-hmm. from it. So it's, it's been a really popular video. Um, and basically what I saw from that, the, what you see in that Schumann resonance is um, it's almost like a, it's from a monitoring station in Russia. Now, if you look at all the other monitoring stations around the world, um, they weren't picking up on that sacred, same sacred geometry and all the rest. Of it. it was just coming from a monitoring station in Russia. And uh, what was what was interesting was that at that same time, the energies that everybody was feeling, including myself, were literally off the charts. Like I've, I'm sensitive, so anytime there's a solstice, the energy is quite high anyway. Mm-hmm. But this was just something else. Like it was literally to the point I couldn't sleep properly. Um, I literally, it's almost I was feeling just blissed out, just tuning into the energies of the earth. Come, I was like, wow, this is incredible. And when I was looking at the resonance on um, on that monitoring station. You could see what looked like DNA helix helices. You could see what looked like sacred geometry. And I was like, wow, this just looks like coding, which is coming up from the earth. And it's interesting because since a few days after that, um, what they did was they kind of, they've scrubbed all, all of that data off now. And there's people who are coming out with theories saying, oh, it was a glitch, the, 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 the sort of monitoring um, equipment sort of messed up and they've reset it and all the rest of it. And, and, you know, that's fine that, you know, a portion of people saying that. However, there were thousands upon thousands of people, not only in the comments of my bit videos, but others as well, who were feeling completely overwhelmed energetically. And mm-hmm. so I think that there was definitely something going on uh, energetically. I, do, I tuned into it. And what I was shown is that almost as if this was like a gear shift, really. It's like where it's almost like this ascension arc begins to accelerate is what I was shown. And there's two timelines going on now. You've got that are running parallel, like two train, like a train track. You've got two timelines running parallel, the three D timeline and the five D timeline. So, and the, and you can at the minute you can go between one and another like this, depending on how you see the world, what your outlook is. If you're all doom and gloom, you're still plugged into you know the mainstream and you're watching CNN and all the rest. Perhaps from time to time you'll bounce back into to three D and you'll be on that for a bit. But you can interchange. But there's going to come a point where the two timelines then begin to go away from one another like this. And then the point the, the timeline that you're on 
is kind of becomes anchored as your timeline then. So um, wow. I, at the minute we've got this parallel thing going on. Um, and into next next year is when they arc away from one another. So it's only in 20, we ain't got long to wait. It's 2024 is when it starts to happen. So pick your pick your train track, I guess, is what we have to do. So let's talk a little bit about this. So there's the 3D timeline, and then they were moving into this 5D timeline. They're currently going parallel. What are yep. the biggest differences between living in 3D and living in 5D? Um, so having living in 5D, you basically got this operating system of unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And that's the holy grail. So basically the, the, the holy grail is, is not an object. It's, it's a frequency band. It's a frequency of unconditional love. Okay. So God is within all of us. It's a potential within us. It's a potential within you, me, all of us. But it, basically what we are, we're filtered by layers and layers and layers of pain on top of it. And usually because of shitty, sorry for swearing, but shitty situations that we've been through <laughs> that have really hurt us, right? You know, it can be this this physical experience can be really tough. Um, and but once we take away all of that pain and all of the trauma, and we can we strip it all back, we strip it all back. Our default position is unconditional love at all times and um, a neutrality, and that's the holy grail essentially. That's that that's you become godlike when you achieve this this frequency of uh, unconditional love. And so the five D timeline um, is a new operating system. Think of it like just a new way of seeing the world. And it's a process where everybody is healing themselves emotionally. And that at the end of it, we're just living with dignity, respect, and love for one another, basically, and living sustainably on, on Earth. That's that's the 5D timeline. It's not a new planet. We're not we're not gonna get sucked off and taken off to like some different place. It's like there's your backpack and you're just gonna get plonked on a new planet. There you go, build your community. It's nothing like that. We're still gonna be on the same planet. It's just we're going to be at that point. The the people in three D will still be walking amongst us, but they will just be with the three D operating system, and you know you'll be able to see them. But it's almost like they will be on a different planet or 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 in a different dimension because they will be. They'll be operating on a different frequency band. So it's just you know in to, to summarize, I guess it's just it's a it's um it's coming from a place of of unconditional love at all times and any operating system that's. Yeah, and I want to kind of break this down a little bit more for anyone who might be listening and confused. It's essentially you're operating at a different level of consciousness, right? So uh, a way that I kind of describe levels of consciousness um, to some of my clients is, you know, consciousness, if you just define it, it's the ability to see multiple perspectives at once. And when you're in a really low level of consciousness, you can really only see your own perspective. That's like, honestly, kind of when people are in 3D, it's like they can't see it from your perspective. If you've ever argued with someone who's like in 3D and you're like, how can you not see this from a different perspective? You know, it's just they, they're they only living one perspective. And so when you enter 5D, it's more you're operating at source consciousness, which is the consciousness of unconditional love. So you essentially are transmuting all of the lessons, all of the karmic patterns, maybe all of the pain yeah. that you're experiencing, but you're seeing it through a level that is so high le that, that's so high level that you see the purpose in all of it. You're like, oh, okay, this is all source. And so even the pain is source, even the hardships are source, even the lessons are source. So you, so you actually transmute anything that you're experiencing back to unconditional love. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. Yeah. And you're also um, just to touch on a point you made, which is, which is amazing is that you, you're able to take like an elevated perspective over any situation and not only see your own side of things, but you see the side of other people as well, because, you know, it's, um, every, and, and it's just a case of um, when you're able to do that, you're able to, even if people are wronging you and are kind of, you know, crossing a line sort of understand, you can understand why people do certain things because you can see it from their perspective. It mm -hmm. doesn't mean you have to agree with it. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't mean that you can't set boundaries in a really healthy way. But it just enables you to, with that understanding, I guess, is, um, you know, offering that person, I guess, um, compassion and, and, and again, love. unconditional love. Yeah. Yeah, unconditional. Exactly. And it's so cool to see because I work with a lot of clients where we are, you know, transmuting the shadow and healing internally. And it's so cool for people, for me to see people go from, maybe even like a 
they look at these people that have hurt them and they they blame them to when you start to heal what happens is your levels of consciousness expand and then you finally go oh that person also has healing to do and is 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 unhealed and that's why they hurt me and you can see the bigger picture of things and i think that's the true reason why spirituality has always been such a safe space for me and something that i've just been into for years and years and years is because it gives everything a purpose you can really find you can really find like the why it gives a reason why everything is the way it is and so for anyone who is maybe walking the line of 3d to 5d and they're kind of like freaking out because they're listening to this and they're like all right Aaron well I want to make sure I'm on that 5d timeline what can I do to raise my consciousness to make sure I get on it what would you say to them so the first thing um well there's two things you can do really um you know it's not just one thing but but the, one of the first things that you could do um is to start to clean up your receiver so your pineal band is think of it like your that's your little device like we've got these iphones these devices that connect to wi-fi and all of this mm -hmm. think of the quantum field as this natural field of wi-fi that's everywhere right it's just a field of energy field of frequency mm -hmm. and you know just think of when you think of wi-fi it's normal and you just accept it right because it's part being part of everyday life but when I mention quantum field, it might sound a bit weird to you, but it's the same thing. It's just a different field of energy. We accept one, but we, why don't we accept the other, right? So it's just mm -hmm. it's just perception is what it comes down to. So first, of, first thing is that your pineal gland is your receiver, your natural little iPhone or laptop that's going to connect to this natural Wi-Fi field. So you need to make sure that your connection is good. And so you need to clean up your receiver. So, you know, if you're just think, think logically, right? So your iPhone here, I've got, I'm holding up an iPhone for anyone who's just listening to this. If that was covered in plasticine or clay, how good do you think my reception to Wi-Fi would be? It wouldn't be very, I wouldn't have any, would I? Because it's covered in stuff. So your pineal gland in your, in the back of your mind, if you're drinking fluoride, you're consuming all of this kind of stuff, it can be calcified. And so when you've got all of this calcification on top of it, it blocks your connection to this Wi-Fi field, this, this frequency field. And so what you need to do is to clean it up. And so if you can remove as much fluoride as you can from your diet, so, you know, not only is it a massive neurotoxin, but actually lowers IQ level. Like there's that whole thing about the fluoride stare, right? When you're trying to talk to people and there's that vacant look, it's, you know, that's the fluoride stare. And they've even done studies to, um, to show that in children, uh, children who consume fluoride, it actually lowered their IQ level by seven points. So it's, a, it's quite a significant, yeah, it dumbs people down. And then if you actually wheel in the mainstream media, telling people what to think, it's all about control and it's nothing to do with your, your oral health care or your teeth. They couldn't care less about that. It's about control. So um, essentially what you want to do is to remove fluoride as much as possible. Um, you know, if it's in the water supply, obviously you've got personal hygiene, not saying don't take a bath or a shower. I know you absorb it through your skin and stuff, but at least stop drinking it if you can. You can buy filters to filter it out um, if, you know, from tap water or, you know, any other water source, get, get yourself some filters for the fluoride. Mm -hmm. Number two, there's some cheap supplementation that you can take that doesn't cost the earth. You can find from any good health or natural store, anything from ginkgo biloba to ginseng to magnesium to chaga mushrooms to iodine, and the list goes on. There's a lot of these supplements. And if you if you remove the fluoride and you sup, you, you take supplementation, you will notice that your connection improves within about two and a half weeks. That was my wow. experience. Okay. So it doesn't take long. If you remove the toxins and help the body, the body is amazing. It'll, it'll do amazing things. So that's, that's the first thing I, I, I would recommend. And then what I would say when it comes to the rest of it is to start to work on all of the stuff which has hurt you. So all of the pain and all of the trauma, and it means being courageous because you've got to go to some of the darkest places emotionally that you've ever been to. You've got to go right back to some of the rawest stuff that you've held on to. And all of the pain frequency is actually trapped within your organs. You store it like a big sponge. And so what you need to do, just think of your body and organs as being saturated with pain, what you, and like a wet sponge. And all you're going to do by doing the shadow work is just wringing the sponge out and getting rid of all of that water out of it. 
and you're going to become if you look at a sponge that's full of water it's quite heavy isn't it when you wring the sponge out there's nothing in there it's quite light and that's basically what you're doing to your body the dense frequency is the pain you're going to wring it out get rid of it and then your body becomes lighter and your frequency increases yeah and so what i'm really hearing from you is working on your human that's something that can kind of get lost in the spiritual community it's like you know i have a lot of friends or people in my community where they're like i want to you know start my light language or i want to you know evolve to 5d or i want to do all these things and it's actually about working on your human literally clearing out anything that is not unconditional love everything that it's holding you down from having these higher perspectives and then naturally you're going to rise to 5d is that right it is and and i think you know what people get people are so kind of consumed about abilities and kind of developing and it's like oh i want the highest states of consciousness oh there's the actorings there's all that. and all of that stuff is the exciting stuff the shadow work is the unglamorous stuff right that's kind yeah. of like the foundations of all of it so when you look at a beautiful house that's been built and you've got this magnificent structure and it looks stunning, like if you can imagine your dream house now, probably in Malibu or some stunning place in LA or whatever, or, so, or other parts of the world, you've got this idea of what how it looks, right? But the th shadow works like the foundations. You had, at some point, you had people covered in crap, covered in mud, in trenches, mm -hmm. in the mud, slopping around, pouring the concrete, to be able to build this structure on top. And that's the unglamorous stuff that doesn't get seen. But actually at the end of it, if you can sort the foundations out, you're gonna have a magnificent spiritual structure on top of it, but you've got to get the foundations done. As soon or later, you're gonna to have to do them. I would say with hindsight, it's probably a good idea if you do that stuff up front and get it out of the way, yeah. because once you've done it, you don't have to do it again. You never, you have to do it twice. You have to do it once, but you know, that. All it all it means is just wringing out that sponge and just getting all of that pain and trauma frequency out of your body and letting it go once and for all. Yeah, and that's the unglamorous part about that spiritual journey. You know, we we tend to talk about these beautiful things like connecting to other intergalactic beings and being able to, you know, have all these amazing abilities, and they all are so, so amazing. However, some of the unglamorous parts that I personally work on a lot with my clients is like you're gonna have to shed a lot of people and you're gonna have to start to set boundaries and you're going to you know have to really deal with the ego death that comes with seeing the matrix for what it is and it's a lot of pain that you have to go through internally to get to these beautiful things and has that been your your journey as well have you had to kind of do those 3d shedding things to get to the level that you're at today yeah definitely and you know one one of the hardest it's probably one of the most painful pills to swallow but it's one of the, the earliest pills that you're going to swallow is actually seeing the matrix for what it is and actually realizing up to that point that you've just had the wool pulled over your eyes and been lied to the whole time and that you were fooled and it's and it's a painful thing because you know what you're dealing with at, at that stage early on you've still got this pride inside of you and you still got ego and ego and pride don't like to feel foolish and you don't like like to feel like you you like you've had the wool pulled over your eyes or, or somebody's got the better of you and the first one of the first realizations is is actually seeing this matrix for what it is and seeing this system and realize that you've lived your whole life believe in the mainstream media believe in government believe in the political system believe in the healthcare system, believe in that governments actually cared, boom, 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 boom. And, and the whole thing becomes this big realization where it's like, wow, I've spent decades of my life here trying and pushing and chasing money and trying to climb that property ladder and thinking I was doing the right thing and saving for my retirement. Realize, then you start to realize how money's made and you see the fractional reserve bank and you're like, oh my God, oh my God. And the whole thing is such a painful pill to swallow because you've got to realize, you've got to admit that you've been fooled and that the whole thing was a lie. So you have attachments to all of these things that you've been <clears throat> trying to obtain for so long. And you're like, it's all a lie. It's not even for my highest good. I know. And then, then another thing is that your friendship circles and stuff, you know, you might be awakening from this, but, you know, some of your closest friends might still be plugged into it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it can be extremely difficult um, initially because, you you know, you might find that you're trying to make sense of it all and people are falling away from your life. 
you know, people stop talking to you and distance themselves, they'll call you weird. Um, perhaps they start talking about you. And what's happening is essentially is you are, you've, it's like Neo in the film. That's why it's such a good thing. Literally warmth, waking up from and seeing the matrix for what it is, that sea of batteries just sitting there, powering the machine basically. Mm-hmm. And it's like, when you see the matrix, it's it's an equivalent of this. But yet all of your friends and everybody are still underneath submerged, still pumping into the system, still playing that, you know, matrix role. And I think what happens is that the second that you do that, your frequency naturally starts to increase. It's a natural thing. You don't have to try. It just happens. And what will happen is that you will start to resonate higher and higher. And the people who are still sort of resonating quite low because they're plugged in, it's almost like you're operating, you won't see eye to eye anymore. And people will start to fall away. But it's not that you're destined to sort of live this solitary path and, and not have any connections, but you'll start to attract new people in your life mm-hmm. based on your new vibrational signature. So it's just a, it's just a, a, an evolutional, it's just a, um, it's just a growth thing that we go through, I guess. So mm-hmm. it's nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about, but it is hard for the human when you're going through it because you think you're never going to connect. But I've personally dealt with it. And I I haven't talked about this too much on my podcast, but, you know, it took so shedding so many people. And I'm finally at the point where literally everyone I connect with is just living in 5D to the point where we're like, we don't we don't deal with 3D people. It's it's too it's a mess usually, you know, and not that it's a bad thing to deal with 3D people because we're still on Earth, but it's when you realize and you're operating with people who have the same level of consciousness as you, there's so much more peace. You know, it's like you have an argument, you just talk about it. You have something that you're feeling or you're feeling triggered. You just state it and you work through it instead of like, you know, in 3d, I've been finding it's like, there's all these repressed emotions and people don't know how to heal and they don't know how to work through it. It just, there becomes a bigger, bigger vibrational gap. And something that I tell a lot of my clients when they're dealing with this massive shedding of people from their past is it's not personal it's just vibrational <laughs> that's correct and and the door is always open you know you should um you should always seek to level up you should never level yes. down yes so it's kind of i think i think there was a there was a uh, i think it was snoop dog made i watched him on a podcast once and he made that point about never leveling down always level up Mm. And what he means by that is that basically when you start to act kind of up level and work on yourself, you start to kind of level yourself up to these higher levels. And, you know, just because perhaps your friends or connections are perhaps down there or they're on a lower frequency, never kind of come down to other people's level. Invite them to come up. So always have the door open, you know. So let's say, um, you know, if any of your closest friends, perhaps they go through their own awakening their vibration starts to increase. You then start to have some stuff in common. Perhaps they come back into your life, but they've come up to your level then at that point. And it's always a case of leveling up the frequency and never leveling down, you know? Yes. So it's, My yeah. friends and I, we like to say, mind your vibration, meaning like, don't worry about what everyone else is vibrating with. Just focus on your own vibration and things are going to flow how they're supposed to flow for you. <laughs> 100%. You, you all, and the thing is as well, I, th- I think... <clears throat> that when you start to um, you start to live almost instinctively and you pay attention to a lot of things of how things make you feel as mm-hmm. opposed to do they logically make sense yes. I feel into a lot of things like, you know does it feel like a good decision I forget, mm-hmm. I forget the logic I don't care <clears throat> when when I moved here from to Costa Rica from Australia <clears throat> I lived in a nice house in Australia had a decent car had a home office, business was set up, I had friends over there. And it was kind of had the visa to stay. And it kind of didn't make any sense to come to Costa Rica at all. But that's everything my instinct was telling me to come and do. And so I've and, and so we did. And, I, and we've never looked back. It's been really, really good for us. It's been a fantastic, it supported us. It's been a fantastic place. But you know, one thing I've I've definitely learned to do is to to not pay attention to logic. And, all, and, and like I say, live by feeling, live by emotion and live by does something feel like it's it's a good thing. And I think if when people step into that and you can surrender to it, then you're always supported in the universe. You always will be supported and, um, and it always works out. Yeah. And what I'm hearing you say is like you're really living from your heart now and your heart is the most amazing uh 
you know, <clears throat> technology, when you start to see the power that it always knows the way it's like this God given gift, and it's always going to show you your highest path. But sometimes our human logical brain can start to dim that and we go back and forth. But really, you know, that was my personal path to fulfillment as well is is always following my heart. Like when I quit my corporate job, it made zero sense. I was making way less money. I was basically poor for a couple of years while I built up this business. And it's like, it didn't make sense to anyone, but in my heart, I just knew it was the right decision. <laughs> you know, you know what, one of the things I've learned as well, and you know, you, we kind of, uh, you know, look, look into things and feel into things, <clears throat> but uh, one thing's for sure, it's there's two sets of desires in life. You've got false desires and you've got true desires. Mm. And false desires are desires that are imposed on you by the collective. So I'll give you an example. you you see your next door neighbor's got a brand new car, you think, oh, I want a brand new car. You only want that car because the neighbors bought theirs. So that's kind of like an imposed desire. It's not of the heart, it's not what you truly want. And and you can extrapolate that across different circumstances. But true desires are desires of the heart. Like mm. they they just they, they come from inside of you. They come from you. And the beautiful thing about true desires is that if something is true and that it's backed up by an emotion and the field is stimulated with this emotion, then that comes to pass with no problems. So you, for instance, your true desire was to leave your corporate job and do this. And yes, OK, it might have been, you know, finding your feet and building it up. But ultimately, it's going to be success because it's what you truly want to do. You're living in your essence. And that's the, that's a lesson for anybody. Pay attention to what's actually true and what's false. If you follow what's true and you're living your essence of what you really, really, really want, not what other people say or society says, but what you truly want, then literally your life will just be straightforward and, and not simple. We still need to take the action, but there's no problems. It's just plain sailing. And I'm sure you're going to go from success to success because you're living from your essence, which is amazing. Mm. Oh, that was so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that, Aaron. Well, I feel like you gave so much knowledge today and people would probably need to marinate on this, but if you're open to it, I would love for you to share a little bit about what you do. Maybe give me a mini reading of the Akashic Records, um, whatever you're feeling called to share. I think that could be a fun way to end. Okay, just give me a second. Okay. So first, so first of all, um, so just so I know where I'm going, yeah. with it what are you after you're looking for galactic or you're looking for terrestrial because they're in two separate places for you, so. do you think we could do maybe a little bit of both so people can see the difference or is that a lot okay yeah that's fine i'll tell you what i tell you if if it's okay and again you feel into um how you want to do it um if i just give you an example of a terrestrial past life that i can read rather than finding something with karma because obviously we're on a podcast and uh, you know some yeah. things are sensitive and yeah i just wanted to kind of clear it up there yeah, before we before we do it yeah so i'll just give you um, i'll just give you an example of, of what i can read of a past life i'll try and find something Perfect. significant for you if i can and then what i'll do is um i'll go to your galactic hall and I'll see if I'll see if I can find um, something significant for you there. And when when I say significant from a galactic perspective, um, you should start to see some of the things that I'm describing there mirrored in your own personality and stuff. And you just think it's part of who you are, but it's actually mirrored from your life there. So just before we do that, then and again comes back to the whole karmic thing and not imposing myself. Can I just ask that you're happy for me to? access your field and, and read this is that okay yes it's okay thank you okay so just i'll just sort of talk to you about what i'm doing i'm just coming outside of my body if you sense anything i'm trying to be gentle as i come through but i'm going to go and access your terrestrial and i'm basically reading your records on your on a on a cellular level on your within your dna okay i'm in coming up to so it looks like two blocks when when i access it and i'm just coming making my way up to the entrance now <clears throat> inside Okay, 
Okay, so um, this goes way back. This and I th do you know what? I thought this was. Um, I thought I could feel this coming off you. Um, because when you reached out to me on um, on Insta, like I said, I had a quick look at the profile and all the rest of it, and I, I just get blends of energies hitting me when I see people for the first time. And what I can see here with you, I'm going right back here, um, but I can actually see that you've lived in Lemuria, and I, you can probably feel this as well. Um, I can feel really strong earth energy with you here. I can see that you were female. Um and as I'm looking at you here, it's very green. And I can see this crystalline buildings here, mm. buildings which um, they resist. It's almost like, like a peachy, crystally kind of building and there's clear quartz and they're using vibration a lot. Um, I'm just seeing what you, you would do in here. Um, I'm just seeing you here. You just stood there. You're in the robes and I'm seeing you. What are you doing here? seeing you under i can see this water over here there's a lot of water there's a lot of greenery okay you're you're okay you're kneeling down and let's see what you're doing okay so it's interesting so basically what they they were using the um uh the clear and crystal they were using for frequency but what I can see here is that they used to use different stone or rock and they used to pr also program this with frequency. Um, and it's something it's this is technology which has kind of long been forgotten about. And in fact, I'm sure I'm I'm no geologist, but I'm sure if you were to contact Rio Tinto or one of these geological companies, I'm sure that there's a resonance of certain stones or they would be able to store a certain resonance if there's been some study around this. And this is just what I'm seeing, but I'm sure if, if there's somebody listening to this, that they may be able to confirm that. But what I'm seeing here is it's almost like this stone plinth. And it's almost like you're... It's like you're kneeling down and it's like you're it's like a, you're connecting your forehead to it. I'm looking like this, and I can see it's almost like you're transferring information into it on a conscious level. And mm -hmm. this it's almost like like this is almost like a storage facility, as I, I want to say, or what I'm looking at here. And I'm just I I feel like you're part of. There's no religion back then, but it's like. Um, it's like what would the what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, the I don't know what they would call them, but like the more spiritually connected Lemurians, like they're all consciously advanced anyway. But they were they were ones that used to kind of um, I don't know the word I'm looking for. It'd be like the very very conscious Lemurians, let's say, mm. and. I think that what I can see is that that there's a section of their society that used to do this and used to program crystals and used to charge things with energy and used to connect energetic grids to protect the, the city and used to do like the recording of almost like history that's being stuck in these, these rocks. Mm. And I'm sure that... There's rocks on this earth now that contain um, information that was stored in there by the Lemurians. And this is the first time I'm getting this. I've never had this before, but this is kind of, I'm just doing this in real time and just giving it to you. Um, and it's like you've been given a set, there's something which has just recently happened. And it's like you're, you're part of this order of that society. And there's not just you, there's many. So, you know, it's, um, you're part of this kind of like, sort of, conscious element of of the lemurian society super conscious mm -hmm. and a part of that is recording into these stone structures and i'm just that's all i'm seeing i'm just seeing you down just put, connecting your um forehead onto this stone like this and i can see that this stone has been there for a long time because what i'm seeing is on the top of it it's slightly worn that's what I'm, it's been shown to me it's slightly worn as if there's been generation after generation after generation of people who have connected in the same way that you're doing here. It's quite a sacred um, 
sort of thing that I'm watching here. There's almost like a like a like a almost like a sacred ritual that's, that are, that that I'm being shown. Um, so yeah, super 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 interesting. So let me just tune out wow. of this a second. I'm just coming out. This was way way back. This was way way back. I thought, like I say, I, I, when I first saw your face on Insta, it's like I got this blend of frequencies, and Lemurian yeah. was one of them. That wow. Came off. I was like, well, okay. So just coming out, just coming out, just coming out. Okay. <clears throat> right. I'm gonna go galactic now. So I've just come out of the terrestrial hall, and now I need to make my way around, down the outside of it, down the outside. So it's now the terrestrial blocks on my left hand side. I've got the Oversoul template on my, my right. I'm just coming to the back end. Big courtyard now is opened up in front of me and the galactic hall is over to the left-hand side over there. So I'm turning 45 degrees and I'm just making my way across the courtyard. I see the keepers and guardians that are kind of milling around here, just kind of making sure the place is uh, there's order. Which is pretty cool. And just, just for you, just as a... But just a FYI, really, it just feels nice and calm here. And as you'd expect, so it's kind of, yeah, everything feels sort of nice and, and calm in here. So it's a good thing. Um, Just coming up. Okay, so I'm outside the Galactic Hall. When I tell you what, when I'm channeling, my body just gets really, really hot. So I just start sweating like <laughs> unbelievable. Um, so I'm now outside of the Galactic and see the entrance, right? I'm going inside. I'm just making my way down the corridor. Stone columns, both sides, buried into the, the sides of the corridor. I'm just making my way down to the central chamber. I'm at the central chamber and you can see the plinth or block over there. I'm making my way to the outside of that, looking down. I can see this pool of energy that's swimming like a rainbow. And I'm just submerging myself through that portal, dropping down into space. Okay. Okay. So this is where the galactic records are held. So actually, what I'm doing now, I've left your body, and I'm actually tuning into your higher self or soul. Now, this is where I'm reading from, like, in practical terms. It looks to me like a like a, a another block within a courtyard. How I'm seeing it, in my consciousness. But what I'm actually doing, I'm actually tuned into your your higher self here. Um. So second. Okay, so what I can see, there's two, there's two lots of energy that, that are coming through. Um, there's Arcturian energy, which is mm -hmm. which is coming through. Um, but I can, like I say, I can talk about that till the, the cows come home. Um, but there's another blend of energy that's coming through here, and it'll be from a, another significant life. So I don't want to, I'm not going to dwell on the Arcturian side of things, but I just want to give you something that you don't know. And what I can see here with you is um, actually like, a Lyran feline life. So mm. that's the cat. Now, Lyran feline, if you listen to Lyran feline um, light language, okay, either you will be speaking it or it will be in there somewhere. So mm. my wife is a galactic linguist. She's got a light language library with lots of different samples on her website. You can go and check it out if you want to. It's there for free. Um, and just go and listen to the Lyran feline light language. But how, what you will see, I'm just seeing if you're male, I can see it's female. Um, humanoid, but just will look like a cat, basically. And uh, but the frequency is super interesting of the Lyra felines because um, the Lyra feline is excellent frequency for abundance and for financial independence and and all the rest of it. Um, so the Lyra felines they love pretty shiny things, things which are really aesthetically nice and tactile. Mm -hmm. So you know, either you will have an appreciate if something like it just looks really nice, or if you're in some nice five star hotel or the surroundings of some nice beach club with an infinity pool, just things which are nice, or perhaps you've got, um, you know, you've got a jewelry box where you put your earrings in, you'll have nice little trinket things, and you like shiny, pretty things. And this is basically Lyra and feline energy. Um, okay. but again, it's like. Um, also loving the frequency of money in a healthy way no, nothing wrong with that at all money is fantastic energy it's a fantastic support mechanism to access your highest timeline um i personally love money money frequency she's she's a fantastic um she's fantastic energy um 
but again, there's this, uh, you've got, the, you will have or be able to tap into the coding of financial abundance quite easily through this, through your connection to the Lyra and Felines. Um, light codes, upgrades, activations, um, you'll notice that a lot of the Ascension abundance teachers, let's say, um, either stem from Lyra and, Lyra and Feline, the Lyra and Feline race, uh, or they will be channeling Lyra and Feline technology and codes. Um, wow. So it's just uh, super interesting that this has come through for you and that this was a significant life. Um, but it's just so that you understand that's just a small part of your galactic history. You yeah. know, it's like you may, you may well have lived thousands of galactic lives. You may well have. I mean, obviously, I've, I've read A Lifetime from Lemuria, so it goes way, way back. You probably lived thousands of um, terrestrial lives. And, and, you know, that would make you relatively speaking quite quite a wise soul and you know you, you probably <laughs> quite yeah i know you're quite young from a human perspective but you probably feel quite wise and and on the, on the inside kind of thing you know and quite sensible quite you know quite um quite experienced i would say um from us on, on a soul level um so it's just awesome um let me just come back out of here for a yeah. sec back into the pool i'm just coming out of that i'm just going to drop back down to point zero so i'm just coming down down, 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 down to the point where i've just come out of my body so i've now detached myself away from you and what i'm going to do now is just bring us into sovereignty um i'm just going to come up with the declara declaration that any energetic cords ties or bonds created between uh, either of us either consciously or unconsciously as a part of this process I now disconnect, I dissolve, I rescind, I send all this energy back to source. As each and every single one of us comes back into complete and utter sovereignty as a group of independent souls and consciousness. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Um, oh, man. Thank you so, so much, Aaron. That was oh amazing. <laughs> yeah, I'm that was a, Sorry. a lot of energy. No worries at all. So it's oh, so okay. funny before we hop off officially, I'll tell you in the, it's funny that you said you're part of this group now and you know, you guys are doing, you might be like doing some similar work. So I have these four friends that I actually made in Costa Rica and we've been doing some grid work around, <laughs> around the earth. And it's so funny. Cause you said you were like, I was touching the rocks and we went to Mount yes. Shasta recently. Wow. And there was this stargate that we visited. And yes. at the stargate, there was these chakras or there was crystals that represented all these chakras. And I literally have yeah. to show you because we have this picture where we're all putting our hearts against this like rock and chakra and like putting our hands oh, on it. And it's just so wow. funny that you kind of picked up on that because I feel like that's probably a parallel. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, if that was like a natural thing to do, but it was kind of it's 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 strange because um what obviously at, at Chasta, what you were doing you were sending energy collectively into the into the, the rock mm -hmm. right but what i could see in lemuria in the lemurian days you were actually sending almost like consciously recording part mm -hmm. of that lemurian history that just happened into the stone into the rock wow. so it's almost coding it with energy and like i'm not a geologist like i was saying it's the first time i've ever seen this so this is a first for me um, but I'm sure if there's some geologists watching this, I'm sure they would confirm that that rocks are able to hold frequency. Yes. And so that's basically what what they were what you were kind of doing in those days. So it's fa fascinating, really fascinating. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Aaron. Can you please tell how people can work with you and join your mentorship? Um, give us all the information if people want to connect and learn from you. Thank you very much. Um, so. Um, I, you know, I don't offer sort of one to one sessions anymore. I stopped doing that last October and I simply did that to concentrate on more group stuff because I literally didn't have time for anything except for the, like, just delivering these individual sessions. So there's a few ways now we've got um, sort of a psychic starseed development school we call the Quantum Club. We nickname it the Jedi School of Light. We meet every single Thursday for live sessions um that's we've got a thriving community of over 100 uh light workers and starseeds in there now uh we've been that's been operating for uh, over two and a half years now 
um, over 120 recorded sessions, which is about 180 hours of recorded content in an indexed on demand, what we call the vault. We've got quarterly workshops in there. It's a fantastic community. You can check that out called the Quantum Club. It's on the architectsofdestiny.com website. Uh, so that's the Quantum Club. Um, there's, as I mentioned, there's every year I run the Akashic Mastery Academy. The That's designed to take you from scratch to spiritual practitioner level within three months. And I do this every single year. I bring the I bring new sessions out every year. This will be the third year I'm holding it. Um, we've got a growing academy membership every single year. The beauty of it is that once you're an academy member, uh, you get the updates every single year in perpetuity for free for no additional cost. So once you're an academy academy member, you're 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 in the club, and you're going to get the updates for free every single year. So mm. that's the Akashic Mastery Academy. Um, and then every year with my wife. Um, who is a real love guard. What we will do is we run a program called Transcending Dimensions. And that is, uh, we're just coming to the end of a six month, um, six month journey. We've taken a group on since January. We're just coming to the end of that now. We'll be enrolling at the end of this year to start again in 2024 in January. And what we basically do in that, it, the whole process is modeled on our, mine and my, my wife's personal transformation. So it's all we do, it's based on three pillars. We've got uh, the descent, which is all of the emotional purge that we were talking about, shedding all of these layers, healing all the pain and trauma, getting rid of all the patterns, the ancestral patterns, getting rid of uh, everything which isn't serving us and shedding it all. So that's the first two months. Then essentially what we do is start to build people up with all the upgrades, teach people how to channel, teach people how to connect to different races, teach people how to download consciousness technology, et cetera. And then in the, the last two months, it's about, and by the time people are getting towards the end of the program, people's highest timelines are basically coming in. And it's then about anchoring in that highest timeline. So it's not a case of we access it and then it's like, like a yo-yo where we're up and down. We want to get to this highest timeline and we want to be able to hold on to that frequency. The only thing that's stopping people's highest timelines from coming in is literally clutter and junk within the field where that energy can't flow in. And so it's a complete energetic metamorphosis um, over a six month period. And that's called Transcending Dimensions. And again, that's on the Architects of Destiny website. If you're interested, you can reach out to me by email, Aaron at AaronLazar.com, or you can check out my website, or you can reach out to me on socials, TikTok, whatever. So it'd be really good to, to hear from you and get in touch if you're, uh, you're looking to develop spiritually further. And thank you very much. You're welcome. And I'll link everything below, guys, all his websites, his TikTok, his Instagram. So go check it out. And thank you again, Aaron. I'll see you guys soon on another episode.